So for a little while I've been using a mirrorless camera in conjunction with a cheaper iPhone. So I stopped sort of upgrading every year to the pro iPhones and waiting for their cameras to get better and better each year and instead just bought a proper mirrorless camera which has already got phenomenal image quality. I don't need to keep playing this upgrade game every year. So I knew when I switched away from using an iPhone as my main camera that I, I wanted to keep the iCloud photo library. It's just got too many amazing features like the optimized storage option which lets you save all, only the full resolution ones on the iCloud server and then save space on each device and you can you can decide to do that device by device, which is really nice. And then you've got the shared albums, which is a really great feature that's just integrated so nicely into the into the phone. And of course, my parents have got that. They can see pictures of my kids and so on. And of course, the beauty of the iCloud photo library is just how well it synchronizes across all your devices. So from your Mac to your iPad to your iPhone, you make a change in one place and it just synchronizes through. It's, it's brilliant. It's exactly how a sort of modern cloud photo library should behave, I think. So one of the main appeals of using a, a mirrorless camera with a big sensor is to use the raw images that it outputs because the quality is just so amazing and it's nice having that flexibility to tweak the images much further than you would if you were just only using JPEGs. But I didn't actually want to commit to doing a full raw development workflow for every single picture I take on it. I'm quite happy just taking a lot of pictures with it using the built-in film simulations which on the Fuji are really wonderful, they're lovely looking images straight out of the camera but those are the JPEGs. So the answer of course is to use the RAW plus JPEG mode in the camera where it saves the RAW image and the JPEG using the film simulation that you choose. And then it's just a question of working out the workflow on the iPad to work with those files. So it turns out the iCloud photo library actually handles RAW plus JPEG images really, really nicely. Uh, it's got a lot of tricks up its sleeve and we're gonna look at that workflow in this video. Before we go on, I just want to quickly mention this channel. I make films on design, usability and workflow and I've got so many exciting things that I want to share with you. So click subscribe and we'll go on this journey together. Get stuck in in the comments below and like and share this video too. And when you do subscribe, click the bell button just so that you're the first to know when I make a new film. So let's get stuck in and on with the rest of the video. So when you first connect an SD card reader into the iPad, pop your SD card in there and import your RAW plus JPEG images onto your iPad, they go straight into your library and iCloud Photo Library, the Photos app, automatically uses the JPEG as the default image. So immediately you've got your Fuji film simulation or whatever camera you use, the JPEGs that it produces, you've got those ready to share straight away. You don't need to do any development. They're just, you know, the nice finished product ready to go and they're by default, that's how it works. So that's great. But the raw version is also saved with that file. It's not its not a duplicate. You don't see two of each image because you've got the, the two separate files. It bundles them nicely. It treats them as one image. You're, you're totally unaware of this when you're browsing through the library. So the nice thing about iCloud Photo Library is it makes the raw image and the JPEG image available to any device using iCloud Photo Library. So when you jump onto the Mac version of Photos, you can actually choose image by image whether or not it should use the raw version or the JPEG version as the main source for that image. And the Mac version of Photos actually has a, a really nice collection of powerful tools that you can use to edit that raw image. And, and you're, you know, you've got a nice raw workflow right there. But those tools, unfortunately, are not available on the iPad version of Photos. So that's where we need to look a little bit deeper. So the nice thing about the Photos application on Mac or iPad or iOS is that it will always be non-destructive. No matter what happens, your original JPEG and RAW file are there and they're never changed. You can always revert to them at any point in time. So this whole logic applies on the iPad as well as the Mac. Even if you've switched to the raw version as the source image on your Mac, and then you start editing that one on your iPad, it still regenerates the image based on the raw version every time in a non-destructive way. The main issue with the workflow here is of course that you have to go to the Mac to trigger the switch to the raw version, and the tool set you get on the iPad version of Photos isn't as complete as the one on the Mac. However, all is not lost because Apple have exposed a level of access to your iCloud library for third-party applications to use, and this is where the magic happens. So let's say you find a nice image that you want to spend a bit of time on, you want to jump in and tweak the sharpness, and you want to push the colors a little bit, and you, you want to really enjoy the fact you can do that from the raw version of the image. So what we need to step in here is a third-party app called Raw Power. 
And this is an app that's actually developed by a guy who used to work for Apple on the Aperture and Photos teams. In fact, I think he headed up the whole team of people that worked on those applications. So he really understands how the Apple raw processing system works. So as soon as we open Raw Power, we can start browsing our library through Raw Power. It's not doing any importing or copying or anything weird like that. It's just showing you your library. And then when you click the edit button, it'll actually assume you want to start working from the raw version of the image. And that's the point you might actually see quite a change in color because it's obviously then loaded the raw version uh, in its sort of default setting, which can look quite different to the way the JPEG looked. So the great thing about Raw Power is that it lets you control the raw processing part of the way the software builds the image. So normally that's just kind of behind your back a little bit, but this app lets you really adjust how it generates that image from the raw data from your camera. So the data in a raw file is basically just the data that the sensor sees. Uh, so to understand that a little bit, what we're going to do is just look at how the sensor sees the image. And that's a bit different to the way you think of the final image. So on your final image, you're used to sort of, when you zoom in, you'll see pixels and each pixel is a color, it's a complete color. And obviously out of a huge range of colors, that pixel is just one of those colors. But from the camera's perspective, it has to measure the light using its tiny little light sensors, photo sites on the sensor, and they just measure brightness. So for it to derive color information in that image, what they do on the sensor is they put filters over those photo sites. So they either have a red or a green or a blue filter over each of the photo sites. And the way it can work is on normal, on most cameras, you have four, uh, photo sites on the sensor, two of them are green, one red and one blue. So the interesting thing with Fuji X-Trans cameras actually is that their arrangement of filters on their photo sites is quite different to previous cameras. Uh, and if you look at a picture of how those filters are arranged, you can see it's, it's not even, it doesn't actually resemble normal pixels at all. So apparently with the right kind of raw processing, you can actually generate these really lovely sharp images. And I'm very confident that raw power is getting the best out of those Fuji pictures. So it's worth noting here that raw power actually is leveraging Apple's built in raw engine. So when you edit the pictures on a Mac and you're tweaking those raw files, it's Apple's raw engine that's being used to process those images. And raw power uses that same Apple engine. It just provides those controls to you as part of the flow instead of Apple Photos hiding it from you on the iPad and giving you a fairly limited tool set on the Mac. So when you look at the mosaic of the way the filters are organized on your camera sensor, you can see that there's actually quite a strong role of the software in interpreting those values when it comes to creating the individual color values needed for your pixels in the final image. So for example, if you imagine overlaying a pixel grid over that mosaic data, does each pixel just look at the colors underneath that and average them to create the color? Or should it look at values from the adjacent pixels and factor that in as well? And if so, by how much and so on. So you can see there's a range of different ways that different raw processing systems would use to create an image. The raw sharpening tool that you've got here is a good example of that. So as you adjust that, you get a really different look of the sharpness of the image. And it's not an artificial kind of sharpening. It's just simply a different way of interpreting that mosaic data to give you a different desired level of sharpness in the output image. That's this kind of control that really fascinates me about working with raw files. So once you've finished tweaking the raw processing section, you can move down to more familiar image editing tools like your color curves. And of course the normal sharpening tool, which is the one that looks at the output image and will apply sharpening to that. So it'll look for areas of contrast and increase the contrast along edges and things like that. That's the one you wanna be a little bit careful with because you can over sharpen an image and it does look a bit artificial. So once you're happy with your image, you can just tap done and you'll be prompted if you want to modify your original image in your library. And of course, because all this is completely non-destructive, you're definitely safe to just go ahead and tap modify. So what happens at that point is that raw power will actually generate a new JPEG and attach it to your original image. It doesn't touch the original JPEG or the original raw file. It just sits this new JPEG on the top. And then iCloud Photo Library will use that JPEG whenever it's displaying that image or you share that image to somewhere else. Else. So the clever thing about raw power is all the changes you just made at that point also get saved in a data format in your image in the iCloud photo library. So that would be synced across to other devices like your Mac, where you can open the Mac version of raw power and see all of your changes and tweak them. And of course, generate a new JPEG based on those settings, but it's all completely non-destructive at that point because your adjustment data is synchronized through as well. So each time it saves the new image, it starts from the raw version using all of your adjustment settings. So there is one tool that I miss from raw power at this point, and that is the selective color, hue, saturation, and lightness adjustment that things like Lightroom and actually Mac Photos has. 
but I've spoken to the developer about this and he assures me it is actually coming and coming quite soon. So that's great. I really look forward to seeing that here. But that does prompt a quick look at an alternative workflow that lets you use the Mac version of that tool on top of the raw power JPEG. So once you've saved your image out of raw power, if you open that file back on the library on the Mac Photos app, you can then use the Hue Saturation and Lightness tool to adjust that JPEG. So remember at that point, you're no longer in a non-destructive uh, kind of workflow, you're just tweaking that JPEG. So you don't wanna go too nuts with the settings there, but it is a fun way of getting that tool, uh, you know, at the moment where raw power doesn't have it. And that kind of idea actually works on the iPad as well if you have found another third party app like Darkroom, for example, which has that tool. So you can use Darkroom to edit the raw power JPEG and stack those kind of settings in that respect as well. So hopefully this workflow has really shown you that you can have the best of both worlds, the iPhone simplicity and the really awesome image quality from a larger sensor camera. The brilliance of it is it doesn't force you to do a complicated raw processing workflow with every image. You still get to use those brilliant JPEGs, especially with Fuji with their film simulations for most of your kind of quick family snaps and things like that. But you can use the raw files if you want to. And the beauty is of course, the whole workflow works on the iPad only, which is really nice. You haven't actually got to fire up the computer anymore if you want to do this, um, but it will synchronize through to your Mac if you need it to. So I hope you have fun with that workflow and enjoy taking some pictures and I'll see you in the next video.